Hey everyone, welcome to part 108 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll convert our battle state to use state stack architecture. So before we start, let me give you an overview of what we're going to do. So we'll convert the main battle state to use state stack architecture and make it a game state like this. The battle state itself has lots of states under it, right? So we have things like action selection, move selection, and all that under the battle state. So in the future, we'll also convert those to use the state stack architecture by using another state machine inside the battle system. But in this video, our focus is to convert the battle state itself, not the states inside the battle. Okay. So first, let's create a script for the battle state. So inside scripts, Inside the game states folder, I'll create a new state called battle state. Okay. And let me open it up in Visual Studio. All right. So this is going to be a state of game controller. And to use the state class, we have to import the gdutil start state machine namespace. All right. And this is going to be a state of game controller. So in this state, first we need a reference to the battle system. So let me create a CTLIS field and get a reference to the battle system. Okay. And next, I'll make the state a singleton so that we can easily get its reference for switching to it. Okay, so I'll create a public static property and I'll initialize it from the awake function. All right, so next I'll overwrite the enter function and from the enter function, first I'll cache a reference to the game controller. Okay, the same thing that we have been doing for all our states. And next from the enter function, we have to start the battle, right? So previously, the code to start the battle was in the game controller itself. So here we have two functions, start battle and start trainer battle for starting the battles. But now since we have a state machine, we can move that code into the enter function of our battle state. Okay. So first I'll move the code from the start battle function. So let me just cut this code. We don't need the part where we set the state. Okay. And let's go ahead and paste it in our enter function. All right. So we have few errors here because we don't have access to these variables. So let's fix them one by one. So these are variables inside the game controller, right? So we don't have access to it here, but some of these variables like the current scene is actually a property in the game controller. So since it's public, we can easily access it from the battle state. Okay. And other variables like world camera and player controller, they're not property, they're just private variables. So we'll have to expose them to be able to access it from battle state. So let's go ahead and create properties to expose the player controller and the world camera. All right. So first I'll create a property for the player controller. And then I'll create one for the world camera. Okay. And now we can access the properties from our battle state. So next, we need access to the trigger that started the battle. So this is something that we have in the start battle function. So it's not available in the game controller. So what we can do is we can pass the battle trigger as an input 
to the battle state. So here I'll create a property for the battle trigger. Okay. So this is going to be the input of the state. So let me just mark that as a comment. And now before switching to the battle state, we can set the trigger from the start battle function. Okay. So let's actually do that from the start battle function now. So first we have to set the trigger input of the battle state. Okay. And then we have to switch to the battle state. So I'll call state machine dot push state and I'll go ahead and push the battle state. Okay. So now in the enter function of the battle state, we have written the code for starting a while battle, but we should also handle the trainer battle case. So in the trainer battle, the main difference is we call battle system dot start trainer battle function instead of calling battle system dot start battle function and we have to pass the trainer party. Right. So let me just copy these two lines and paste them in the enter function. Okay. So here we need the reference to the trainer. So we can actually make the trainer an input just like the battle trigger. All right. And what we can do is if the trainer is null, then that means this is not a trainer battle, right? So in that case, we can start a while battle. And otherwise, if there is a trainer, then we can go ahead and start the trainer battle. All right. So now we also have the code for starting the trainer battle in our enter function of the battle state. So let's also go to our start trainer battle function and replace this code by just pushing our battle state. Okay. And we should also set the trainer input in this case. All right. So next from the enter function, we have to subscribe to any events that we have in the battle system. So if I open up the battle system script and let's check for any events that we have. And by the way, we have an error here because our enum is also called battle state. And since we created a new class called battle state, this is creating a conflict. So what we can do is we can change the name of this enum to battle states instead of battle state. So I'll use control RR and okay, we can't use control RR to rename this in this case because there is one conflict since the class also has the same name. So what I'll do is I'll just rename this to something else for now. And then I'll rename the battle state enum battle states so right now we don't have any conflicts here okay and now we can change this name back to battle state all right and by the way this should be battle state and not battle states you know all right so now all the others should be gone and our enum is now called battle states. Okay, so next let's look for any events that we have in the battle system. So here we have an event called on battle hour, right? So if we have any events, then we have to subscribe to it from the enter function. So I'll subscribe to the on battle event, on battle hour event from here. Okay. 
and I'll attach it to a function called on battle over. Let me go ahead and create the on battle over function over here. All right. And this function also takes a Boolean variable. So if you go look at the place from which the function is called, I believe it's called from the Okay, we have a problem here. When we renamed our battle state enum, all these lines also got changed. So this should be battle state instead of battle states. So let me change all of that. All right. And now let's look at the battle over event. Okay, so this is a function invoked by the on battle over event in the game controller. So here we have a Boolean variable called Vaughn. So let me also create that over here. Okay. I'll actually rename this function from on battle over to end battle just to make it different from the name of the event. Okay. And next we have to put all this code in the end battle function of the battle state. All right. But I don't want to put all these code right now because things like evolutions and all will be handled as a separate state in the future. So I'll just put the bare minimum to make the battle system work right now. So first, let me just copy this piece of code. So this calls the battle lost function of the trainer if it was a trainer battle and if the player won the battle okay so this will make sure that if the trainer loses once then he'll not challenge the player again for a battle okay so that's done and next we need to do things like disabling the battle system and enabling the world camera so that we can go back to the free roam state but I'll actually do that from the exit function because we are enabling it from the enter function. So just to keep the code consistent, we'll do the opposite of this from the exit function. Okay. So from here, I'll just pop the current state. So this will pop, so this will pop the battle state and go back to the free roam state. Okay. And when this is called, the exit function of the battle state will be executed, right? So let's go ahead and now write the exit function. And from here, we can do things like disabling the battle system and enabling the world camera and all that. So let me just copy these two lines. And I'll just do the opposite of what we did in the enter function. Okay, so we'll disable the battle system and we'll enable the world camera. Okay, so next we also have to unsubscribe from the on battle over function. So let me just copy this line and change this to minus equal to to unsubscribe from the event. All right, so that is done. So when a battle ends, we also have to do other things from the end battle function. But I'll be implementing it once we refactor the battle system to use state stack architecture. Okay. So now we are done with the enter and exit functions of the battle state. So next, we also have to implement the execute function. And in this function, we just have to call battle system dot handle update function. All right. So that's all we have to do in the battle state. So now the battle will run using the state stack architecture. So in the game controller, inside the update function, we can remove this code where we call battle system.handleUpdate. 
because just by calling state machine dot execute the battle state will be executed okay so that is all we have to do so let's go to unity and try testing this so first we have to attach battle state to our game controller okay so let me go ahead and do that and we also have to assign the reference to the battle system all right and now let's try testing the battle using the new state stack architecture all right so yeah you can see that we have battle state about free roam state it's not really clear right now because of the hud but yeah i hope you get the idea the battle state is about the freedom state all right so now the battle is actually handled as a state of the game controller but the thing is inside the battle system we have lots of other states right so these states won't be game states they are states of the battle right so what we have to do is we have to create another state machine inside our battle system so it will be like a sub state machine of our main state machine inside the game controller okay so this will be the state machine that handles the main states and inside the battle system we'll have a sub state machine so that's what we have to implement next so we'll be doing that in the next video so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.